Robinson, the 29th Chief National Guard Bureau. Sharing this special occasion today are many family, friends, and special guests. We are extremely honored to have in attendance General Nordhaus's family, which include, please hold your applause until the end, his wife, Shannon Nordhaus, his daughters and son-in-law, Whitney and David Swain, and their children, Henry and Daniel, his son and daughter-in-law, Captain Clay and Madeline Nordhaus, and their children, Alexandra, Heidi, Theodore, and Thomas, his sons, Luke, Austin, and Noah Nordhaus, his mom, Sandra, and his sister, Michelle Kale. We would also like to welcome all extended family and friends joining us today. General Nordhaus would also like to welcome our distinguished guests. Please hold your applause until the end. Kelly Hokinson, spouse to the, to the 29th Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Lieutenant General Michael Lowe and his spouse, Diane Lowe, and all other distinguished guests, general officers, senior executive service, extended family joining us today. Please stand if you're able for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes, the national anthem performed by Chief Master Sergeant, retired Misha Dawson, followed by the invocation given by Chaplain Brigadier General Peter Zalewski. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and of the free and the home of the brave let us pray O oh Lord, on this occasion, bestowing additional honor and trust on the shoulders of your son, General Stephen Nordhaus, we acknowledge your providence, especially in his family and friends that you have given him. We thank you, firstly, for his parents, particularly Don, who is certainly here in spirit, and his mom, Sandra, who is blessed to have the joy of being here. Thank you for giving him parents that saw your hand in their son's hopes and dreams, parents who encouraged and assisted him in them. Thank you for Jeff and Michelle who taught him about sharing and friendship and forgiveness and love. 
Lord, thank you for Shannon, who you certainly matched him with perfectly. And then, Lord, thank you for giving him Whitney and Clay and their spouses and these six beautiful grandchildren. Thank you, Lord, for Luke and Noah and Austin and all their talents. Lord, we know that it is this supportive family without which he could not have made it so far in service to us and others. So, Lord, bestow your blessing on his family and his friends today. May they truly feel they are part of his work and that their love have, has fueled his accomplishments. Lord, just as his family and his many friends have been a visible help, we ask that you, who are usually invisible, but always real, help him in these years to come. Be tangibly present to him. And especially when the challenges come, Lord, gently remind him that there is often more blessings in the valleys of life than on the hills. But we sometimes need your help and your patience to see those hidden blessings and see them come forth. And Lord, just as we, his friends and fellow soldiers and servants, express gratitude for what you have blessed him with, may we today remember to appreciate the similar gifts you've bestowed in all of our lives. And may we see these clearly. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, Chief Dawson, Chaplain Zaluski. Please be seated. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the presiding official for today's ceremony, General Hokinson. And so when we looked at the 
connection between Steve's whole incredible experience, all of his service, but particularly what he did at that level, really operating a three and four star level at two star, and his ability to really collegially encourage people to meet all of the requirements for civil community. And today when you see there's 430,000 people in the National Guard. And Steve is the one out of 430,000. When you look at, I don't even want to consider the percentages of <laughs> public math. But the other thing is, is when you look at our military, over 2 million. There are eight really on the board of directors and one of the joint chiefs of staff. And that's one of those things that Steve will do. Sit in that room and have those conversations and really base on the experience that he has gained in the organization, helping the home on our nation better. But that's just part of the story. Steve, we know, great airman. We've been great, so we have a great airman, um, but leading both our soldiers and airmen. What really makes he what he is, is the fact that he's a great husband, he's a father, he's a selfless servant, he's a patriot, and he's a friend. I think all of us are very aware of that. Who Steve is, is shaped a lot by his family, his family, his kids, and those that raised him, and those that know him throughout his career. And your impact on Steve is something that our nation and all of us will take. But first, I want to thank Shannon and you for all the sacrifices you and the kids have made throughout your life. Um, because you helped more than your parents first. For the family and friends here today, everybody has a part of that. Thank you for what you've done. Because our nation is really fortunate to have such a great day. So thank you. Thank you, General Hokinson. General Nordhaus, please come forward and join General Hokinson for the publishing of the promotion order. Publish the order. Esteemed guests, please stand if you're able. Attention to orders. Order number GOM742401 by order of the Secretary of the Air Force and direction of the President, Stephen S. Nordhaus has extended federal recognition and appointed as a reserve of the Air Force in the grade of general with an effective date of 2 October 2024. Signed, Lieutenant General Jonathan M. Stubbs, Acting Chief, National Guard Bureau. Thank you, General Hokinson. Please be seated. Would Michelle and Luke, please come forward for the pinning of the rank insignia on the service jacket. Thank you, Michelle and Luke. Now we ask Noah and Austin to please come forward for the placement of the epaulets on the service shirt. <laughs> 
Thank you, Noah and Austin. Lastly, would Whitney please come forward for the pinning of the rank insignia on the service cover? Thank you, Whitney. General Hokinson will now administer the oath of office. Esteemed guests, please stand. I, Stephen Scott Nordhaus, have been appointed a general in the United States Air Force. You solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evading, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. Please be seated. Thank you, General Hokinson. Would, we would like to invite Captain Nordhaus to please come forward for the posting of General Nordhaus' new personal colors and render his first salute as a four-star general. Throughout the history of warfare, our general officer's personal flag symbolizes leadership on the battlefield. The Armed Forces has incorporated the use of flags to signify a presence of a general officer. This flag is visibly displayed in the office of that general officer to commemorate the promotion to general in the United States Air Force. Thank you, Captain Nordhaus. It is my pleasure to present to you for the first time, General Stephen Nordhaus, United States Air Force. I don't know how many naturally end up. I've heard you saying over the years. 
I sent in a little note like, hey, if Chief Dawson's available. <laughs> it, each time you hear you sing it, Chief, you just knock it out of the park. Um, get me emotionally uh, every time, every time. So thank you, Chief. Uh, Jacqueline Zawiski, uh, first time we met was this morning. Uh, I know where we went to church actually in Tindo area. You were uh, uh, back there. It seems like it's meant to be. Um, thank you for the phone call and uh, all, of, all the uh, thoughts and prayers. It's really uh, an invocation today. It uh, really touched me and touched all of us. And uh, I appreciate uh, your continued uh, prayers. Um, General Hawkinson, uh, when I worked for General Grass back in the early days, there was one tag from Oregon that would come in and the boys had all this stuff together and was put together things that were going to make Oregon uh, take it to the next level of not only process and improvement, but how you work with the interagency and the other states around that for all the things that could happen on the West Coast, whether it was hurricanes, wildfires, or earthquakes. And uh, General Hokinson, I saw right away, was the go-to tag. And so to see him come up and become not only director of the Army National Guard, but then vice chief of the National Guard, and then chief of the National Guard Bureau was just, just amazing. And so I can't thank you enough for being here today. You and Miss Kelly have just incredibly amazing uh, examples for us to follow and look forward. Shannon and I to continuing that uh, hopefully on a nice steady, steady climb with you all in the So thank you. Hello, Mike and Diane. Back to 1987, I think it goes. I was at the academy. Um, got sent over to Germany uh, to do a three-week uh, tour over there. And who did I meet and who was in charge of nine cadets was Mike and Diane Lowe. He was a lieutenant at the time, flying the F-16. Definitely thought I was going to fly the F-15. And I got six F-16 rides and quickly changed my mind that the F-16 was the way to go. Um, flying at uh, 250 feet uh, over Germany and being engaged by World Wars and dropping bombs and air to air and all the stuff was just amazing. And then of course Mike had to go and do some stuff, so Diane took care of nine cadets. Uh, we went to the Paris Air Show, we went to all these things to be able to get around and see. Um, so thank you for all the love and support uh, over the years, the guidance to left and right, no, don't do that, do this. And, uh, both the general Hokinson and to you, uh, just amazing, so thank you for being here. Uh, now I want to start off with you, honey bunny. <laughs> 35 years of marriage, right? And uh, we did it for about two and a half years at the academy, so going on 38 years. Uh, your love and support has um, the world to me. Every day I come home, whether it's a good day or a bad day, you always find a way to brighten it up. And I think the first eight years, uh, our kids being together, I was gone and deployed for those years, so you think about the spouses that stay home while our military members uh, and the 430,000 families are so critical to that and what they do every day to keep the home fires burning while our service members are overseas or in the homeland doing missions. Uh, can't think of Commissioner of our NSL uh, football league. <laughs> uh, the only two-time champion of it. Uh, and with uh, um, Super Dave, I call him Super Dave, uh, just an incredible spouse to uh, Whitney, your love and support, and then uh, these two incredible uh, grandkids with uh, Henry and Daniel. Thanks for always being uh, everywhere. And I told him I was going to embarrass him a little bit. He's also playing hockey right now, so I said I'm going to call him Super Slapshot Dave. <laughs> As we move down here to Sun, uh, number one Sun, right? Play. Number one Sun. Uh, number one. Uh, <laughs> Once again, we call the uh, originals a little bit Whitney and Clay because uh, we had them uh, about two years apart. And uh, Clay, as we were, was, we were actually hurricane. Uh, Andrew destroyed her house. Shannon was pregnant with uh, Clay, and so I was at Shaw. I had to fly out for his birth. 
And uh, so, uh, Clay, that, uh, just came into the world, you've been an incredible support, joined the Air Force, and then somehow moved over to the Space Force. <laughs> yeah, you're the Guardian now. Uh, and Matt Lyon, thank you for being such an incredible uh, spouse to Clay, uh, and these four incredible uh, grandkids. The flights to talk it good? Yeah. <laughs>
I think it was fifth grade baseball. Uh, we met these uh, four incredible uh, individuals, Mike and Kelly and Tom and Dawn, and uh, just hit it off. And uh, really, uh, lots of time uh, going through uh, high school and sports and all those events. And you were just a great, uh, great outlet to be able to come over and hang out learn from you both about how to be great fathers and how to uh, take care of kids and uh, great moms as well. So thank you all. Appreciate you uh, being here today. <laughs> and then uh, Paul and Brenda could not be here today. So uh, Paul is a 23-year retired uh, Master Sergeant Air Traffic Controller, my father-in-law. Uh, he loves telling pilots what to do. <laughs> so, uh, about that, but they, they uh, were not able to make it back. They came out uh, because um, it's been a week out here uh, a couple weeks ago and weren't able to make it back. But uh, Paul and Brennan, just incredible in laws, um, an incredible family. And I heard from Jennifer and Alan this morning, so thanks to them. And uh, David and Sharon, uh, thank you for being here, representing the family, the Lawrence family. Uh, incredible. So thank you. never been in the Panhandle and you've never been by uh, Tindall, which got really hit by Hurricane Michael back in 2018. Uh, but way before that and way after that, the uh, Tindall family and Panama City and everybody around there are just amazing family and friends. Take care of the military in so many uh, ways. So Tom and Margaret, thank you for being here. Just a huge support of military families, the base, uh, everything around that local community. And uh, cannot thank you enough for uh, your friendship and for being City and all the men and women around there. So the first night I got to an event where they were doing military and uh, civilian leadership at the Bay County uh, Bay County event. Um, Harvey walks up to me and he's like, "How's Paul doing?" And I go, "Paul." He's like, "Yeah, your father-in-law. He and I went to high school together." <laughs> <laughs> so 23, I think we're in your graduating class in a small uh, Kansas uh, school there. And uh, Harvey, uh, just an incredible friend uh, while I was there at Tindall, and uh, can't thank you enough. And look forward to continuing our friendship with Joanne. Thank you as well. So, thanks everybody. And then we were here, uh, for those of you, I think everybody's coming to this afternoon's event at 1 o'clock. But as General Hokinson said, uh, I was at Toledo as a wing commander, I was headed back to Delta Airlines, and uh, I was going to be a part-timer again, and things were looking that that was going in that direction. And my tag, Joe Barton, called me up and said, what do you think about going to D.C.? So I talked to Shannon. She said, yeah, um, you know, military child. We've been in Toledo for 12 years. She was, she was all on board. I talked to the two big kids. They were like, yeah, I'll go back to uh, getting the kids on an active duty base or some type of uh, base out there and let them like, experience that. And I talked to these three here, and they said, everybody goes to D.C., man. That's a, a vacationing spot. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't sure it was going to be vacationing for me, because I never had a staff job. And uh, I uh, do an interview with General Grass uh, in Toledo uh, back in the day on this little BTC. And at the end of the interview, he said, so you coming to D.C.? And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and I walked out there going like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> and uh, so I went to the Pentagon, but the Pentagon is 27,000 people day, you know, day in and day out that are flowing through there that are doing all of the DOD business with the Joint Chiefs and then the two million service members that uh, and, and civilians that uh, do the Department of Defense that General Hogan's been talking about. Uh, but working for General Grass, I guess, the amazing, incredible 430,000 guardsmen spread across 50 states, three territories in the District of Columbia. Today, my email said 46,000 engaged globally, right? So 22,000 engaged overseas support combatant commands, uh, 14,500 um, are doing domestic ops. Um, about seven to 8,000 of those are with Hurricane Lee and Milton. And then another 9,500 are doing Homeland Defense and Homeland Security across the U.S. So every day, uh, 
your uh, National Guard is doing just amazing things. I'm uh, very honored that uh, I, I would get to do this job and represent uh, those guardsmen that are out there, whether it's helping our civilians get to their next food or their next water, or defending uh, the skies uh, that are over the U.S. right now, um, or overseas defending our freedoms. Uh, so thank you all for being here this morning. Look forward to seeing you all at 1 o'clock, and uh, can't thank you enough. And uh, God bless the USA, and uh, God bless our nation. Thank you. Thank you, General Nordhaus, the member of the United States Armed Forces, a proud of General Nordhaus, and look forward to working with him as he takes on new challenges. Please remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song, followed by the receiving line in the front of the room. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending and we wish you a pleasant rest of your day.